So this is not my normal studio, but I'm doing a behind the scenes video for you to show how I set up my YouTube studio in my uh, bedroom, but right now I'm in my kitchen because before we get into that, I need some coffee. So let's make some cappuccino. That's delicious to me. Not too bad. Okay, now that I got my cappuccino, I have to correct one thing before I give you the studio tour. Um, my biggest pet peeve in YouTube videos is bad audio. And bad audio doesn't mean it's crackly horrible, but it could just mean echoey. Like this room is echoey, the kitchen is echoey. Um, so I correct that by using a lavalier mic which works great for me because I tend to be moving around the table. I don't have that head in one spot with a boom mic pointed at me. So before we go any further with the tour, let me correct this before I drive myself crazy with my own audio issues. So my solution for audio is the Rode wireless mics and just a, a receiver and a transmitter let's turn them on let's get some life in them okay so now they're connected they're on uh, the transmitter is connected to a lab mic which I'll add on me and the receiver that goes into a camera this little cable just plugs into the spot on the camera and the clip works well in a uh, Hot or cold shoe, just nothing, nothing connected, just a, just a clip. So, put this in, and we connect the cable into the side here without rotating the camera too much. Take this little bad boy and just clip it on me. There we go, all clipped in. All right, we're mic'd up. Let's go ahead and start the tour. Now, since this is my bedroom, and since I want to actually enjoy it as a bedroom when uh, I'm not recording, I take everything that I can and tuck it away as neatly as possible. For my main stand that I use for my primary camera that just sits over in the corner, I have uh, lights that are tucked away, a reflector that's tucked away. Everything's just kind of put where I can basically hide it uh, with an open door or something else. Um, the main thing that I have uh, a lot of space for is this lovely key light with the dome on it and my table that's all kind of stuck over in the corner here with some other uh, b-roll fancy uh, stands and the slider, Zeppon slider, which I probably won't be getting to today, but if you're interested, I can uh, do videos on those too. Just let me know. So all this stuff is cluttered over here. Uh, some of this is for actually working with uh, the guitar riff videos, the smaller stands. I have my computer on that. And of course, uh, I have to deal with the, the lighting, which is normally pretty good in San Francisco, but because I am doing a video that may be recorded after hours. Uh, it, it may be too dark, it, uh, the, the light changes. So what I typically do is 
those curtains get closed and I don't deal with the natural light, I make it as artificial as possible so I get to control the white balance and the, and the color temperature and everything else. So that is open now for the current look, but we'll go ahead and switch that over in a minute. Um, let's, uh, let's start with getting my primary stand out because that is essential to getting the next piece of the puzzle in place. All right, so I got my primary tripod in place. So I need both hands to move some of this stuff. I'm going to basically use my main tripod and let you watch me struggle with equipment from a nice stationary position. I don't have to deal with my shaky cam. Okay, that's the primary setup. Now I just want to clean some things up because they just get in the way and I'm going to use them later when I do the other part of the recording, which is the guitar riffs. These are lights that I use on the secondary recordings. Don't need them for now. All right, so we've got our table, we've got our key light, we've got our reflector, and I need to change a few more things here to make sure that we're getting closer to the actual studio setup. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this desk, which is my work desk, and I'm going to lower it because it's too high for certain lighting conditions. It just works better, it stays out of the way. I'll lower it. Lowered, all right. Now, that allows me to put the reflective light in the right spot and make sure my key light is in the right spot. Okay. All right. Now I've got things a little better. Um, now I need to actually put the exact things in the exact spots. So when I get done with a shoot, uh, I'm always tweaking or changing the placement of things and the format. So what I do is I try to just take a few pictures and I look at where I had them last and basically try to get things in the same spots in the room so they know the layout and you know, kind of where they are on the, the rug has a nice pattern. So it, it allows me to line some stuff up. And that way I have everything just, oh shoot. Um, that way I have everything that should not be in that studio album. Um, so that's how I lay things out. So I'll just look at this and make sure that my table's in the right spot. Let's see, we're pretty close. And let's see my, no, not that, jeez. Okay, so now we're gonna get the key light in the right spot here for the uh, reflection. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, we are in much better shape now. Uh, I've got my basic tripod set up, camera set up, lighting in place, but I'm still working off natural light. So let's go ahead and close the curtains and see what that gets us. That's really dark. Okay, that's not gonna work. And my camera is struggling right now because cameras love light. So this is just way too grainy. Let's go ahead and give ourselves some light. First, I have little uh, accent lights that I turn on. So let me turn those on right now. There they go. Okay, very bright when no other lights are on. Accent lights are on. Let me go ahead and turn on my main key light. Whoa, let there be light. Okay, now we have the main key light and I can throw in some, a little more accent lighting. Let's see how that works. Good. All right, we're getting there. Okay, so the lighting's better, got the sound better, everything's pretty well lined up. Now we need one more light, and let me turn on the reflective light. And you can see how that just kind of brightens things up a little bit for me. There it's off, there it's on, and it just kind of is a nice fill for the room without blaring into my glasses. As a person who wears glasses, 
the lights where they are in the room make a difference. It affects the reflection and what you see. And the whole idea here is to have enough light so you can actually see the whiskey and what's going on uh, without so much light that it looks like I'm just a reflective mess and you keep getting bothered by this moving white dot or moving white blur on my glasses. So the outside of that little tiny battery, the Sony ZV-1 is a great camera. It does a great job of uh, doing vlogging and this kind of stationary video or even other videos, but I, I like it for this purpose and I don't need a lot of interchangeable lenses, so this works out great for me. But when it's in full automatic mode, I found that it changes the white balance based on what's in front of it. It really tries to overcompensate for too many things that I'm doing in a very consistent, confined space. So as long as there's no, no big changes for my uh, recording, what I do is I take the whole automatic process of the camera and turn it off and I go to manual settings. So this is automatic and let me go ahead and change those settings now and see what we get after that. Okay, now we're in manual. I've got all my settings back in there and this is basically what it looks like. I think I have everything set up. I normally do this on a checklist. And the last thing I do is make sure that glare isn't a problem. And you'll see right here on my acoustic guitar that we have some significant glare going on. And the fix for this is surprisingly twist the guitar. These, these magic tricks that you learn because you have to uh, eliminate the annoying behavior of, of lights. Lighting is tricky. Let me just say that. Lighting is tricky. There is, this is taking me the longest to get the lighting and the, and the camera settings correct, but um, after some trial and error and after some deep diving and learning, I found a really nice setup that I can easily edit. And that's what it really comes down to. Uh, this setup, there's a thousand and one ways to do it, but what I'm trying to do overall to make these whiskey riff videos better is to eliminate anything that would cause me to spend more time editing. So if everything's consistent where the position is, then all my editing zoom levels are in there and I don't have to worry about white balance and color temperature or any kind of lighting weirdness. I can use very consistent repetitive actions during my editing process. So what we have now is Everything's out of the way. I don't usually have my phone in front of me. I usually have a bottle of whiskey. I don't have the battery sitting up there. I just tuck it away in a slot so you can't see that. A glass so one can drink the whiskey during a review. And we're good. We have our set set up. It takes me usually about 15 minutes to set it up. I spend a little time making sure that the, the camera zooms properly so there's no uh, angle problems. But other than that, it's, it's a pretty quick setup and the teardown is even quicker because I don't have to be precise with teardown. Everything just goes in its individual corners and then we're done. Well, thank you for watching my behind the scenes video, how I set up my whiskey riffs stu whiskey riffs, whiskey riffs, stu whiskey riffs studio. Couldn't make it through without one of those. Uh, if you have uh, any comments about it or any questions, please let me know in the comments. Also hit me up on Twitter at Kevin Hochter. I'm happy to answer any questions about what I use and equipment or anything else. I also have some equipment information in my description for this video and, and every video. I try to put everything in there. And, um, you know, give me a like uh, if you enjoyed this. Hit subscribe. Let's keep growing this community. I appreciate everyone that subscribed and keeps building this up. And uh, until next time, wait, wait, that's not for today. Well, that's not for this video. I need something to cheer with. Let me grab another glass. Let's get some tealing in here. Thank you for stopping by and until next video, cheers.
now to do a real whiskey tasting review.